Haifa Zangana is an Iraqi exile and the author of City of Widows, a book that looks at Iraqi history through the prism of women's history, but also offers an Iraqi perspective on the American military action in Iraq through a perspective that sees it as an occupation rather than a liberation, remembers crimes of American troops, and says, in her words, it's important to remember that armed resistance against occupation is a right under international law. And I'd like to talk about the situation currently in Iraq, but first, your, your book is through the prism of women's history there, so I think we should start there. What don't people get right about women's history in Iraq? Well, mainly they, they think that uh, Iraqi women haven't achieved much uh, along their history and they are victims most of the time. While everything, if whoever reads history, Iraqi human history, uh, can see uh, that women's struggle has started uh, at the end of uh, Ottoman Empire and at the beginning of the last century. Uh, and they were taking even active role and playing active part in the Iraqi resistance uh, against the British occupation uh, within the 1920s revolution uh, against the colonial powers. You, you write that Iraqi women have been among the most liberated of their gender definitely, in the Middle East. Definitely. As we, at, uh, in, in the 70s, we had the highest number of women engineers of all women put together in the whole area in the Middle East. Uh, and also they were uh, working within uh, domains that weren't accessible to other women in other Arab countries and Middle Eastern countries, uh, scientific. So it's not just writing poetry and literature, but also in the science field. They were engineers, uh, scientists, women scientists uh, in Iraq, highly advanced. How did that progress? under Saddam Hussein? Because as your book yeah. spends some time on, there was an argument that women's treatment was, was quite bad under Saddam in Iraq. Is that your view or not? Well, it's, we have to look at it objectively, really. Uh, under Saddam, the, the country has achieved a lot in education and health service. Uh, it was free and the best in the whole Middle East, education also. The problem is, was the political oppression, because this is a dictatorship that could not tolerate the others, tolerate any other opinion, uh, tolerate the dialogue or presentation of any kind other than the Ba'ath Party. So political oppression was almost the umbrella which suffocated people in general, whether both males, be, yeah. whatever, males or females. In fact, women achieved more at, in certain aspects than men. Like men went to war in, between 1980 to 1988. Men were fighting in the Iran-Iraq war, while women were gradually or fastly even uh, gaining access to jobs that were available to men only. This is where we start to get to your first critique of the American government, which is the use of Iraqi women and Iraqi exiles almost as propaganda to help sell the invasion. Yes. That people came out and maybe either overstated how bad it was for women, or what exactly is your critique? Well, it was, uh, they were used. Uh, okay, we, we all agree. I mean, we were fighting Saddam's regime for, de Saddam's regime for decades. Uh, it's an oppressive regime. It was a dictatorship. Uh, we know that very well. But the regime was weakening, and the Iraqis are starting enjoying some kind of freedom they never had before, even political freedom in the last few years. And also the sanctions were slightly weakening. So that's why it's been immediately they had to launch the war to, 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 to put an end to all this improvement, in fact. Women were used as a propaganda tool, more or less. So women who were struggling so many years against the regime, telling their stories, no one heard of them. We weren't allowed access to the media. No one heard about uh, women's struggle inside Iraq. Hardly, I mean, except maybe few uh, humanitarian organizations or international organizations. But suddenly, 
we, we noticed a few months uh, before the occupation, there was this massive interest in women's plight under Saddam's regime. Suddenly, we started to hear about rape room, torture room, women telling stories no one heard of before. Exaggerated, it could be truthful, but it's being used and manipulated to promote the feminist face of the war, to promote the much needed publicity for a moral war. And that's what is better than using women uh, and claiming that we are launching a war so women can achieve women's rights and women issues, and they've been suppressed so many years. Well, this, yeah, this is where I want to be clear I understand you. Because you had to leave Iraq. You opposed the regime. But on the other hand, you seem to be saying, well, it wasn't that bad. No, it's not like that. It's uh, your expectation from that regime, any change should have taken place from the country itself. We do not need other forces to come and invade under the banner of liberation or democracy. Uh, it's, I, I can't see the contradiction. Do you see any contradiction in that? Is, uh, no, not at all. No. And I think almost anyone yeah. on any part of the political spectrum, or most of it, would much prefer change to come from within than without. Yeah. But I think a lot of people have trouble seeing is how that was going to happen anytime soon in Iraq. You weren't even able to be in the country for the last 30 years. Yeah, but people were there, and they were trying and struggling to change. I mean, no one can imagine what's happening, 13 years of sanctions. This was the biggest blow to any movement, any idea even of dreaming of democracy. You see, what I, I, I'm, I'm leading to is it was actually almost struggling, strangling democracy, the idea of democracy, this economic sanction and the huge sanctions on Iraqi people. We could not even anymore argue on behalf of democracy. So it's been strangled in Iraq totally. And this invasion led furthermore to the killing of any idea of us trying to do something about the country. So we losing, we losing people who believed in democracy, believed in fighting for the people's rights, human rights, and liberation. We are losing it because, in fact, the the horrendous abuses, the torture taking place in Iraq, uh, and the daily mayhem, and the killing, and the states, the admis Bush administration, supporting fully a sectarian regime, or almost it's not even a regime, it's groups of militias, and training them again, which is worse than what it used to be before. 